welcome to the VEX Robotics Competition Referee Training Videos, designed for both referees and teams. This is Chapter 9, Robot Expansion. Robot expansion limits are one of the primary drivers of VRC robot design, and they may change from year to year. This means that it's important that all teams take a look at the limits for a given game before they start building. Robot expansion also drives gameplay. In some games, violating a robot expansion rule can be one of the most significant ways to gain an unfair advantage over your opponents. So it is crucial that referees are extremely familiar with all expansion rules and know what to look for on the playing field. In this video, we're going to step through rule SG2 so that we can look at each part in detail and make sure that there is no confusion regarding VRC Turning Point's expansion rules. Let's start at the beginning. As per G3, at the beginning of a match, each robot must be smaller than a volume of 18 inches or 457 millimeters long by 18 inches wide by 18 inches tall. This part is pretty straightforward and is covered more in chapter two. Basically, if the robot fits through the on-field sizing tool, then it's good to go. So next, let's look at point A regarding vertical expansion. Once the match begins, a robot which is contacting the expansion zone may expand vertically with no height limit. However, once fully outside of the expansion zone, i.e. no longer contacting it, then the robot must return to a height limit of 18 inches tall. The expansion zone is the area of the playing field bounded by the outer edges of the white tape lines and the inner edges of the field perimeter walls. This rule says that a robot which is contacting this zone at all is free to expand vertically as much as they like. Note that the expansion zone is defined as the foam tiles themselves. It is not a vertical plane or volume. The robot needs to actually be touching the zone in order to expand. However, once they are no longer contacting it, the robot must return down to 18 inches. This is something that referees are going to have to watch for often and provide strong verbal warnings if teams are coming close to a violation. That being said, it is expected that brief or minor violations may occur. For example, if a robot has a mechanism that is in the process of retracting down while the robot leaves the expansion zone, and it's still too tall for just a second as the robot drives away, this is probably still going to be okay. In this case, referees should provide a strong warning and always be on the lookout for repeated or match-affecting violations. Speaking of match-affecting violations, it's important to note that a momentary violation that enables a match-affecting action is still considered match-affecting. For example, if a robot needs to exceed 18 inches in order to make it up the platforms, this would be considered a violation, even though the robot may have been under 18 inches when they actually made it up their platform. Part C in Rule SG2, as well as the note, provides some further guidance as to how far the leeway for a minor violation should go. As a result of this rule, robots may not contact high flags. A robot which interferes with gameplay as a result of violating this rule, such as toggling a high flag or blocking a launched ball while outside of the expansion zone, will result in a disqualification whether the interference is match affecting or not. Referees have a few visual cues that they can use to determine if a robot is underneath 18 inches or not. First, just take a look at the robots before the match. Many robots will have relatively obvious retracted and expanded states. Teams who wish to expand vertically should keep this in mind also. The easier it is for a referee to tell when you've retracted back to 18 inches, the less likely you are to receive a call that you would disagree with. If it isn't obvious from the robot design, then referees can also reference the low flags. The top edge of the low flag sits at 18.3 inches above the foam field tiles. So, if you see a robot that is able to reach above the low flag, then it is definitely too tall. Event partners also have the option to place a small piece of white tape at 18 inches on the posts to help referees. But this is not a requirement and may not be present at all events. Next up is horizontal expansion, which is covered by Part B of Rule SG2. Once the match begins, robots may expand, but no horizontal dimension can exceed 36 inches, or 914.4 millimeters, at any point during the match. This portion of the rule should be easier to keep an eye on. Because there is nowhere on the field where it is legal to be more than 36 inches wide, most teams will not design their robots to do so, and this will be checked during inspection. However, 
If you suspect that a robot has exceeded 36 inches in any dimension during the match, you do have the right to use the expanded sizing tool to check with them after the match is over. The best visual cue that referees can use to watch for 36 inch violations is the diagonal of a foam field tile. This diagonal is roughly 34 inches. So if you see a robot that is able to exceed this, it may be worth double checking them. That's all for chapter nine, but make sure you check out our other chapters that explore other refereeing topics.